Howdy folks, Jeff Sangstack here. I want to talk about using Adobe Encore to hide an Easter egg on a DVD. Perhaps you've heard of Easter eggs. These are assets that are hidden on DVDs. The only way to access them is by finding a hidden button and then clicking on that button to then uh, see that hidden asset. And typically the buttons are not visible. They're, they have no opacity. So to find them, you usually have to navigate amongst several invisible buttons and then hope that you've got to the right place after you've clicked left, right, up, down, or something like that on your remote, and then click enter, and hopefully you'll hit the button that then takes you to the uh, hidden asset, the Easter egg. And I'll show you how to do that here in Encore. I've got a basic menu here that I created from a template here down inside the li library, and then I changed it uh, just a little bit by changing the title here. And these are all buttons, and these buttons all have what are called subpicture highlights. They have the selected subpicture highlight and the activated subpicture highlight. These are colors that appear when you're hovering over them with your remote control to tell you that you're hovering over this particular button and then the activated one is will appear the moment you click enter on your remote control it'll appear for just a moment and when you create hidden buttons you want to make sure that people don't see these uh, selected particularly the selected sub-picture highlights because they'll then know they're hovering over a button so you need to make those guys invisible and you need to make the buttons themselves invisible so let me show you basically how to do that along with uh, the navigation that goes along with it so let me turn this guy off I need to uh, add some buttons here that we'll use to navigate to the hidden one the, the one that links to the hidden asset so to do that I'm just gonna go pick a little shape out of the uh, library I'll switch over to the general set here which has lots of shapes click on this little shape button here and there's all kinds of shapes, but you just need something to act as a button. So I'll just take this first one, double click on it, and that adds that star to the menu. To, add, to move it around, I need to use the direct select tool, not the selection tool, but the direct select, select tool. The selection tool grabs buttons, the direct select tool grabs basically everything else. So I'll click on that and grab this star and move it around. Now it's really big and we don't want our hidden buttons to be big because we don't want them overlapping anywhere or getting in the way of any other buttons. So let me shrink that little guy down. And that'll serve as our button. Again, the buttons don't need to be big at all. They just need to be something that you can navigate along a path with. Like you'll navigate to this one, then another one, then another one, and then finally get to the end. So here we have this uh, shape. It's just a shape. If I open up the layers panel over here, it shows all the layers inside this menu, all the objects in the menu. And each of these things with a plus in front of it is a button, a little layer group. And the buttons are comprised of several layers within there. This guy on top, though, is the star that we just added, and it's just a shape. It's just a colored shape. But if I right-click on it and say Convert to Button, watch what happens to this little graphic here. Boom, it suddenly changes in this layer group. has the graphic right there still, but it added the sub-picture highlight layer there with the number 1 in front of it. If you look down here, you see these guys say number 2. The numbers in front of a sub-picture highlight can be 1, 2, or 3, and that indicates which color within a group of three colors will be assigned to that particular graphic. Usually by default it's number one. Uh, it's a little unusual that this particular menu has number two for its uh, highlights, but that's okay. That's just the way this menu is designed. So now we have a button, and I want to duplicate this a few times. So I'm going to click on it, but if I click on it with my direct select tool, I'm not really clicking, clicking on the button. I'm clicking on just the graphic. So I need to go back to the selection tool, click on the selection tool and now I'm actually selecting the entire button. If I go control or command D that duplicates it once, twice, three times. I now have four versions of this button. I'll just drag these guys off to the side here, get them out of the way, make sure they don't overlap. They'll turn red if they overlap. So now we have these four buttons and how they're arranged, you know, whether they line up or not is irrelevant because no one's going to see these guys when we're done with them. I need to then now create a link to this last one. The last one will be the link that goes to the hidden asset and so I've got a little video here that I'll just create and link to that guy so now when people click on this particular button then it'll take them to the asset now how do they get to that button if they can't see it well they need to navigate to the button and then you have to make the navigation using the button routing so down here in this on the bottom of the menu there's a thing called show button routing and what I want to do is I want to say uh, how we get to this last button and if I I want to change the routing but if I I change the routing by dragging these little markers around, but you notice that my cursor has a little universal no symbol through it. That's because I'm not, I have what's called automatic button routing set for this menu. I need to turn that off. So I click on the menu to make the menu active. Then I uncheck this little button over in the right-hand side. This is automatically root buttons. Turn that off. And now I can root the buttons the way I want them to go. 
So the way I'm going to get to this guy, and I could get here in any one of many ways, I'm just going to go from, let's say, button number three here. That's, that's going to be our starting point to eventually get down to this guy here. Now you notice if you look at the numbers here, it, the numbers represent, the one in the middle represents the button number, and the ones on the outside represent where you're going to go if you click left, right, or up, or down. If you click up, you stay on this button. You click right, you go to button two. Click left, you go to button two. Down, you go to button two. This is the automatic routing. If I click left on the second button, if I click left, it takes me back to this one. Click right, it takes me down to the one below. That's, that's the button routing. So let's just say that to get down to button number six, the first thing we do is by going right. So that means on the remote control, they click the right button, and they click the right button, that'll take them down to button number six. Now when they're on button number six, they don't have to go right to get to this next one just because it's next to it to the right. They can click any button that you tell them to to get to this one. So I'm going to have the left remote button take them to button number seven. And the rest of these buttons, if they click up or down or right, I want to have them go back to button number three. Otherwise, they'll get hopelessly lost, and I don't want folks to get too lost. So I'm going to grab these other guys and pull them up to button number three. So if they click right, or up or down, then they'll go back to number three. And number three's sub-picture highlight will be visible. They can tell they're back on button number three. So now they've gone from number six here to number seven. Now they're on seven. How do they get to number eight? Let's have them go up to get to number eight. So drag this guy up to number eight. And every other button will take them back to number three. And this is not like uh, the only way to do Easter egg navigation, but I'm just showing you a way to do it. So to get from three to go to six, they click right. To get from 6 to go to 7, they go left. To get from 7 to go 8, they go up. And to go from 8 to 9, let's have them go down to get to 9. And everything else takes them back to 3 again. All right, so this is kind of this elaborate, torturous scheme to get them to 9. And once they're on 9, they need to just click, press the Enter button to then uh, play this uh, hidden link, this hidden asset. If they click right, left, up or down, I want them always to go back to number three. They, so that means, you know, they, if they don't recognize they're on the button and they click left, right, up or down, they go back to three and, and it's like, oh, sorry, got to start all over again. So here we are. With the navigation now is right, left, up, down. Let's just see how that works. I'm going to preview from here. And this time you're going to see these guys as we go over them, but later you're not going to. So I'm going to hover over this guy to make it the current uh, act, uh, selected highlight. I'll pull my cursor away so I don't have that change. Now I'm going to go to this remote control guy down here. I'm going to go right. That takes me to that button on the left. I'm going to go left. That'll take me to the next button over. I'm going to go up. That'll take me to the next button over. And then I'm going to go down. And that takes me to the last button. If I click the enter button, it'll play the asset. How about that? Let me just show you what happens if I do it incorrectly. I'll preview from here again. I've got this guy highlighted. If I go right, which is the way we want to go, to this one, if I click, let's say, instead of clicking left, I click up, it'll take me back to button number three, and you see how that gets highlighted like that. So always, if we click the wrong direction, we get back to button number three. That's just the way this particular guy is set up. All right, now that we got this all set up, we need to make these buttons invisible. The first order of business is to make the blue uh, the blue color of the main button just go away. And that's really simple. Here are those four buttons that we added. And then you see there's an eyeball next to each blue graphic. Just turn those eyeballs off. And that makes the button itself not visible. I'll turn off the routing, and you can't tell there's a button there anymore. But if I click on, this, on the sub-picture highlight, the selected sub-picture highlight in particular, there they are. So that needs to be dealt with. We don't want the folks to see the selected sub-picture highlight as they go over them. We want to make that disappear too. And the way you do that is by editing what's called color set, editing the menu color set. Now click on the menu here to make it active. And you'll see here's the menu in the uh, properties panel. Down here it says color set, menu default. Now normally by default it's set to automatic, which seems kind of odd if it's called default, right? That would be the it would be set to the automatic color set. And an automatic color set you can't edit. If I go to the menu command, edit menu color set, and choose automatic, you see everything is grayed out here. You can't change any of the colors or the opacities inside the auto automatic color set. So I'm going to click cancel there. So if you want to make any changes to the colors, the selected highlight colors uh, here inside the menu, you need to change the color set to something other than automatic. So I'll just click this list, and the only option here is menu default. You can create menu color sets and have a whole list of color sets to choose from, but that goes beyond the scope of this tutorial. So I'm just going to select menu default. Now, 
Before we go take a look at the color set, let me show you one more thing. If you click on the menu, you notice that it's in menu default, and you look down here, you see that the these these buttons down here have a number one in front of them, and the buttons up here have a number two. That means whatever group you select for the for the buttons, if you click on the button, you'll see that the menu that the button has a highlight group. It's called the group can be one or two. By default, it's group one, but this means that if you have group one selected, then the in group one it'll take color number one from group one. And from group one, it'll take color number two from group one. Well, you can actually have the buttons be in different groups. And to make this tutorial kind of more interesting, or maybe more complicated, I'm going to have the buttons down here be in group two. I select all four and change them to group two. All right, so let's go take a look at what this means inside the color, the uh, menu color set. So I put menu, edit menu color set. Let me drag it out of the way so you can see what's going on. Here's group one. Group 2 for menu default. And remember that I assigned the buttons up here to group 1 and the buttons down here to group 2. I'm going to take a look at uh, the preview here for the selected sub picture highlights. You notice that these guys down here are pink because they are group 2 and they're number 1. And these guys here, this kind of yellow green, that's because they are group 1 and number 2. If I change number 2 here to 100%, you'll see that that is really definitely yellow. And if I change this guy, these guys are number one in the highlight group number two. If I change that to 100%, you'll see that they're definitely pink. What I want to do is make these selected highlight colors, I don't care what the color is, I want to make the opacity zero. Make the opacity zero means that when they're selected, they will be invisible. As people hover their, their uh, remote control over them, they will not see these buttons. They'll be actually on them, but they won't see them. And when they get to the last one and they click on it, then they'll see its activated state, which looks like this. They're all purple. But the thing is, I don't want even the activated state to be visible, because as they're hovering over, let's say, an invisible button, they might click, and then they'll see the activated state for a moment. So I want to make the activated state invisible too. So I'll make that zero. But then that's kind of diabolical, because they won't even see this last button be activated for a moment. So here's how we're going to deal with that. I'm going to say OK. But on that last button, this one on the very end, which I can't even see now, how do I get to it? I turn on the button rooting, and I can click on it that way to find it. I'm going to change it from group 2 to group 1. It'll be a different group now. And now I'm going to go back to the menu, the Edit Menu Color Set. It's now in group 1. And it is the number one over here. See, it's, it's number one, not number two. So I'm going to change this guy to 100%. You'll see that it gets really red now. And instead of red, let's make it something really ugly and obvious so that we can really tell that we've made, made a change here. There we go. So it's, active, it's activated state. When someone clicks on the button, it'll turn purple. So now we've pretty much set this guy up. I'm going to turn off the button routing and turn off the little display of the selected, uh, the activated highlights. And now I'm going to preview this, preview this guy from here. I'll right click, preview from here, and I'll hover over this guy to make it the currently uh, selected button. I'll pull away, and now I'll navigate to the button that's hidden down there. To do that, I go right, and now you don't see anything. If I click, if I click on the button, nothing's going to show up because we turned off the display of the activated highlight. Now I go left, and we're actually now over the, we're now over the button right about there. Now I'm going to go up, now we're over the third button that was on the bottom here, and now I'm going to go down, and now oh, there it is, and we can see its selected highlight, which I didn't want to happen. So when I click on it though, let's see if it turns purple. There it goes, and then it plays this video. So one little last thing to fix here, I, I, didn't, I failed to have the selected highlight be set to zero. So I'm going to go back to the menu, edit menu color set, and for number one here, I'll turn on the so there it is right there. For number one, I'll set this guy to 0%. And now this guy is completely hidden. Just to prove that, we'll go, go through the process one more time. Highlight from, preview from here. Highlight over this guy to make it the currently selected one. Now we're going to go right, left, up, down. And when I click Enter, we should see a purple flash, and then it'll go to our video. There we go. So that, folks, is how you can use hidden buttons and set the navigation such that people need to kind of manipulate around with their remote control to find that little hidden Easter egg using Encore.